Hey, so this is a video to show off my work in progress Panplex display clock. It's obviously not a clock right now, it's just counting up a number as a test. But eventually it will be a clock with alarm, a kitchen countdown timer, a serial communication with the computer, and I think it also has a, uh, what's it called, a, a super capacitor for a backup battery that's trickle charged when power is plugged in. So instead of using a coin cell that needs to replace, be replaced every few years, the capacitor can like run forever. Um, if you don't know what a panaplex is, it's these like flat neon gas filled displays and you give it 170 volts and they glow. I mean this orange fuzzy glow. The, the more popular display that uses this approach is uh, the Nixie tube. So I have a Nixie tube like right here. You might have seen the Nixie tube before. It uses a Nixie tube uses a bunch of preformed wired segment or digits from zero to nine and they're all like layered on top of each other. I don't know if you can see the layers in this video here. Um, and then you like light up each individual digit. Um, and it glows in the same way as the Panaplex does. But because they're all layered on top of each other, the Nixie tube has a kind of like depth limit to it, like limitation where it needs to be fatter. Um, whereas the Panaplex can be very thin and uses this thin bathtub style packaging that's like half ceramic. And there's like a half glass piece that's glued on top. I mean, the, the trade-off is that, you know, the Nixie tube can have any font, whereas the Panaplex is limited to the seven-segment display. This Panaplex, the SP-101 made by Babcock, is actually 11 segments, so it's seven segments for the digit, and then there's two colon segments and a comma. That The comma is actually a comma head and a comma tail, so four extra segments on top of the seven segments. The little dot on the bottom is the castle keep alive, which allows power modulation to happen and it allows you to still maintain the brightness while power modulating I think which I guess lets you save more power so like I tested it down to 25% duty cycle so you're saving 75% of your power and it's still basically as bright as 100% duty cycle if you want to dim the device you just pull the duty cycle down even lower and it'll start dimming and then uh, I have a bunch of uh, modules so that like for this device it's made of a bunch of modules so the top piece is this piece that the Panaplex display will plug into uh, I'm not sort of on are the gold pins. You can see all these little gold pins that act as the socket for the device. And uh, on this top piece is all the high voltage driver transistors. The next piece below that that it plugs into is the piece that contains the shift registers and the latch and also four power modulation channel selects. Uh, so you can select which power modulation channel you want for this digit. I have in this device the first the lower significant bits um, these two connected to one channel and the top two most significant bits to a second channel um, but you know I could have four different channels if I wanted to and then this piece will kind of plug in uh, I don't know if I could do it while holding the camera but yeah there you go plugs in like that and then each module connect to the next one in tandem so you could connect a whole bunch of them chained together and in the bottom two boards on the left there is the, the with the red LED is the power supply. It has a boost converter and a buck converter. It boosts from 150 to 220 volts and a buck converter is like a 5 volt buck converter. It converts 12 to 5 volts for the microcontroller power and all that. And um, I'm using the D Smith Nixie Boost circuit and he has a very efficient uh, design using the Max 1771 that I kind of followed. Uh, I, don't, I haven't tested my efficiency yet, but uh, he has like 85% efficiency, so hopefully mine will match that somewhat. I'm uh, using a, a shielded inductor though, so that's a bit less efficient. I had some issues with my design too, but the people on Neon Nixie's Dash L Google group, that Google group helped me out a bit to solve some of the issues with that. And eventually, I had some oscillation issues basically, and eventually I fixed it. And then on the on the right is the microcontroller board which contains all the microcontroller circuitry and uh, trickle charge, supercapacitor, real-time clock, button connectors for buttons and all that. Right now the only thing connected to is the in-circuit serial programming for my PIC microcontroller. I haven't really made the buttons yet. It's not really finished yet too, so you can see that all the nuts and bolts, the nuts aren't screwed on on these standoffs yet. But uh, I guess uh, let me show uh, the dimming. So let me, right now it's at 2.5% duty cycles. So it's pretty low. Let me switch it to one one side to, I guess, here's, uh, I think this side is 0.25% duty cycle, so you can see it's a bit dimmer. Any dimmer than this, I think it starts, the digits start to like kind of break apart. So let me go even dimmer than this. So here's half of 0.25, so 0.125.
percent. So you can see the di digits kind of now are kind of fading out now. So 0.25 is basically as low as you can go. Now let me bump it up to 25 percent. So 10 times more than the left side. And this is basically its full brightness. And then in comparison, let me put it up to 100 percent on this side. So you can see that you know because of the cathode keep alive, it's, it's basically full brightness at 25 percent duty cycle. So right now I, I don't have any buttons connected, so I have to like reprogram each time. It's kind of hard coded in there now. Um, it's a bit brighter with 100% duty cycle, but you know it's 25%. It's not. It's like almost the same to the eye. Um, so you can save 75% of your power and keep your device lasting a bit longer. And um, eventually, I want to move on to this bigger Panaplex display. So you get this one's massive in comparison. This is the ZM1350 and it's a 14 segment Panaplex display and I mean since you stayed this far let's I'm gonna go through some of my other displays um, I mean I said Nixie tubes use preform wire segments but some Nixie tubes use the same like you know seven segment style this is another 14 segment Nixie tube display so you know the line between Panaplex and Nixie is kind of blurred here I mean I guess the Panaplex you need to have the ceramic ceramic back with glass top whereas the Nixie tube is all like glass blown and then here is a Japanese Nixie tube that's also seven segments but it's like seven eight, and it's like nine segments because it has that dash in there and it's also a Nixie tube there and um, another kind of like display is uh, the filament displays so I mean let me show off the the Numitron first so here's a Numitron so unlike the Panaplex or Nixie 2 that uses high voltages, the Numitron uses like 5 volts. It's basically like a light bulb. It's a bunch of like light bulb filaments that can glow. And then uh, if you, you can also make it flat like the Panaplex. And when it's flat like this, it's called a Minitron. So Minitron and a Numitron. And then this is also a filament type display, but it's a bunch of little like filament light bulbs. And it uses fiber optics to channel the light to the front to form a a display. I don't know if you can see the 8 on the front there. It's also a 7 segment display. And then uh, we have, you know, the LED displays. Here's a smart LED display. I don't know if this one's smart or not, but I think this one's a smart LED display. Um, this one's a military one. It's like hermetically sealed in a glass package and everything. And then here is a more typical LED display. This one's still old though. This one's like from Monsanto. Uh, yeah, that like the genetic engineering company that was in some heat a while back for their crops and all that but before they a long time ago they also made LEDs They're like a chemical company I guess and LEDs do involve a lot of chemicals and here's a it's called a, a thyrotron display so it's also a type of gas filled display similar to the Nixie 2 but not really like to drive this is, it's way different um, and then on the lower voltage side of gas fill displays, we also have the the VFD vacuum fluorescent displays. These are often found in calculators, old calculators, or I think modern VCR sometimes even use. Well, not modern, I guess, like from the 90s, use uh, vacuum fluorescent displays. This one in, is like some military one from Japan, I think. But uh, whatever that that number is. But vacuum fluorescents use around 20 to 25 volts, and they glow kind of bluish. And then I have, um, let me see, here's a large electroluminescent display. So this is a Russian electroluminescent display. And then um, they use like some chemical coating, phosphorus or something like that, and it glows kind of bluish. It could glow different colors. I've seen like orangeish ones. And then um, this one, you can't really see the, the digit, but if you look really close in real life, you can see an 8 in there. To drive this, you re it, it needs a sine wave, 400, not for, sorry, 250 volt sine wave um, at 100, oh sorry, 1000 hertz. So it's kind of hard to drive. You could drive it with a wall outlet too, like 60 hertz, um, 110 volts, but it's very, very dim. And then a few more Panaplex you find them again in in pinball machines, or or other like you know, gas station displays sometimes have them. And then uh, here's a here's a comically large, old LED display like from uh, 
Hewlett Packard a while back from 1975 it seems no that's only the name of it I don't know what what the date code of this is but uh, yeah that's uh thanks for sticking for with the video for this long um, I will see you guys later